Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50. Today's topic, beware of people telling you to get out. What do you mean, Michael? Thanks, Dallas. So, look, anytime we we hit a bottom after a period of negative volatility, um, uh, we get a recovery, as history shows. The yin, so, and, the, the yin and the yang. Of, there's a of, few different th- sayings that spring to mind, like the only way is up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you hit the bottom, it's got nowhere to go but up yep. after that period of time, yep. as history shows. Yep. So, and, and, look, and, and the point is that it's not, it's not that you hit the bottom and we all know that you've hit we the bottom. We don't know. We don't know at that time, but what happened, there, there is a bottom and then prices recover. So Prices yeah. recover. So, so, I mean, almost as soon as the recovery begins and, and in, in fact, well into the recovery, um, even 12 years into the recovery, it's been... It's been 12 years, over 12 years, 12 and a half years since we saw the bottom of the global financial crisis on the 9th of March 2009. Yeah. Um, look, you get, you just get a slew of financial commentators, media members, um, even Nobel Prize winners uh, commenting on why you should get out. Yeah. Um, you know, here's some of the headlines in the last 12 years. So, so just the fiscal- when you say get out, what... What you're yeah. talking about there is 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 either either sell your shares or um, you know transfer your, your money that's in super transfer it all into cash or basically yes, when thank, they're saying get out, out. They're, they're not saying get out get out of this physical location. It's, it's no, get thanks, out of, thanks for pointing that out. out. Yeah, the so they're, they're telling you why you should be fearful. Yeah, um, why you should sell get them. out. Yeah. Of, uh, of 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 the great quality companies in Australia and the world that you may own. And why you should put that money into cash yeah. or fixed and, interest or bonds or whatever. And that's that's a good point you touched on there. Is that it's never it's never it's never said as why you should get out of the great companies of Australia. It's it's always why you should get out of the share market or why you should mm. you know why you should get out of why you should get out of shares. Or what you know, it's never why you should sell your portion of the best companies in Australia and around the world, which is what we talk about all the time. That's right. Um, and you know that that just a few, these are just a few of the large headlines that we've had in the last twelve years. So, the fiscal cliff. Does anyone remember the fiscal cliff? <laughs> remember, like, we we wrote all these down one day. There's some some great racehorse names. In some great place. some great names. So the, the, there was the fiscal cliff. Yeah. Um, from memory, occurred during two thousand nine, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. So the recovery was well underway. Yep. But the entire U- Europe in its entirety was it's going, was, to, was going to fall off this fiscal cliff yeah. and it never happened. Yeah, like it never yeah, happened. So yeah. um, double dip recession. Yeah. That's a, that's a cracker, that one. <laughs> like, because that, that, that gets, yeah. anytime we have a recession. The, the dead cat bounce. It's the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, um, yeah you, you, you see, we have a recession yeah. and then they say, beware the double dip recession straight yeah. away. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> asset bubbles. Yeah. Now, not to say that things can't occur, but but it, but but how do you make any sound investment decisions out of these things? So so what we've had since the bottom of the global financial crisis on the 9th of March two thousand one, look, we've had around four thousand five hundred news days. Yeah. So the news has been reported on each and every one of those days um, during during any form of media, any form of, of financial media. Over those four thousand five hundred days, there, there's been numerous calls from different media outlets, um, different so-called uh, experts, different economists, different, um, like I said, even Nobel Prize winners, mm. commenting on why um, you should get out right now at whatever the price is and get into something else, or why you should get out yeah. and leave your money in the bank account because of the fear of the double dip recession. Yeah. Um, now, what springs to mind immediately for me, and I, I've had a th- think about this. So on those four thousand five hundred linear news days, linear news days, if you aren't immediately right, you're wrong. Yeah. So, um, what do I mean by that? So, 
you know, those articles that appeared 12 years ago, late in 2009, warning of the fiscal cliff and double dip recession, mm. they're wrong. Yeah. Because it never happened. Um, now, even if it did, let's say it did happen in 2021, they're still wrong yeah. because they weren't immediately right. Like, like, And what you mean like, by that is, is basically the price, where the price went to from 2009 to, to 2021, yeah. where, where the price went to, even allowing for a, a drop throughout those times, some, some smaller corrections and, yep. and then a big drop during COVID. You, you were even if you were right about yes there will be a drop at some stage in the future you were wrong because your advice was get out now and 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 then and this is the implied bit and get back in at a cheaper price yes and that cheaper price never the arrived che- so the cheaper wrong. price is long gone yeah um yeah and 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 to put some perspective on it just just having a look at the you know the points value of the mm. s&p 500 the largest 500 companies in america at the bottom it was in the 600s. So yeah. in March of 2009, uh, it was circa 600 points. Yeah. Again, put that back to dollars per share. Yeah. Think of that as a $600 average share price um, for the great companies, great, the top 500 companies of America. Yeah. Now, um, uh, as we're recording this in October of 2021, that price is now $3,400 mm. per average share. Yeah. So it's gone from $600 to... 3,400 now. When it got to $1,000, I think it actually was 4,400. Sorry. <laughs> 4,400. Which, which makes the point even more valid. <laughs> even if it was, even if it, so this is, this is exactly makes your point. 4,400. Even, even if, yep. even if uh, the price dropped from here at 4,000, even if it dropped yep. to 3,400, yep. that's where you've come from over the last 12 months, uh, over the last 12 years. Thanks for that, Dallas. It's late in the day, and I've, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been drinking yet. It's just we've done a lot of podcasts today. So, so yeah, so four thousand four hundred. You, yeah. you, you're correct. Yeah. So, so um, Neil, when the price was six hundred dollars, there were people telling you to get out and get into cash, and when it was a thousand dollars, there were people telling you to get out and get into cash, and when it was fifteen hundred dollars, people were telling you to get out and get into cash. Um, they're all wrong. They're all wrong. Yep. Now, yet every single day we tune into the the yeah. media. Yeah. Um, what 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 happens is there's someone in there telling you to get out. Mm. Rent. I'll rent finished for the time <laughs> being. I'll I'll, I, throw, I'll throw it to you, Doc. Well, so, so. well, I was just laughing because I was thinking. You you're right that they're wrong in those ways, but but it's sort of um, there's another another different point there, which is, yeah, when you read a headline that goes, you know. Due to the fiscal cliff, you know, current financial system is going to melt down, and and we're all going to be living in a cave. Like that's wrong. That's just it, it's 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 incorrect. But the the other one that I think is actually more dangerous is is a is a headline that you see all the time, which is something like such and such warns that, um, and and it's again, it's always the share market might do this, not the mm. great companies. I guess. You know, the price of the great companies of Australia and the world may drop by thirty percent. You go, yes, yes, they may do that. They mm. they will they will do that. Not only may they do that, they will do that at some stage in the future. But knowing that they are going to do that, and and knowing exactly when that's going to happen, and when you can get out, and when you can get back in, are, are two completely different things. So that, you know, when people talk about, you see a headline of, oh, this famous economist or this guy who should know things, he he thinks. He thinks prices might drop by thirty percent at some stage in the future. Yeah, well, yes, like I can tell you that. That's that's going to happen. We already know it. The other one that I find is really interesting is headlines that go, you know, due to due to whatever, due to due to stimulus package ending from COVID, um, such and such economist thinks that Australian share prices may drop by ten percent throughout twenty twenty two. You go, yes, every year, every year company yeah. prices drop by on average. You know, ten to fifteen percent. That is that is an annual event that happens every year. Not only is it, not only is it not not relevant, but it's not even good predicting. It's not even news. It's not news. It's it's just, you know, yeah. it, it's it's a, it's a it's a bizarre thing to it's a bizarre thing to predict. And and then and then another while well, we're on this rant, another third category of headline that that I read all the time, which is interesting, is what no one said two years ago before COVID hit. Mm. There was no news headline saying 
Um, yeah, this economist is really worried because company prices might drop by 35% uh, after a global pandemic. No one said anything about global no. pandemic. It, there was there was there were probably a lot of economists, as there are every year, saying um, you know prices may drop by thirty five percent because of X, Y, and Z. So it, it's an interesting um, interesting thing where those headlines are always phrased as causation, you know, cause and effect. This will happen, and then prices prices may drop by X percent. I guess the way that we approach it is that. We don't know what that thing is that is going to cause prices to drop. We know they will. We know they will at some stage. That's not. We're not sitting here saying you should you should assume that prices won't drop because because there's been a lot of times when people have said they will drop and they haven't. It's actually working the other way. Go assume that assume that there is going to be a 30, 40, 50 percent drop at least once or twice throughout your retirement. We know that's going to happen. Assume that every year there's going to be a 10 to 15 percent drop in prices throughout the year at some stage. You know, assume all these things. We don't know why. We don't know when, and and we don't know. Yeah, we, given that we don't know, we don't know why. We don't know when, and we don't know how long it'll last for. We we can't do anything about it. We can't mm. try and get out before it happens. We can't try and get back into the bottom. It, it's just sort of meaningless noise, really, when you when you put it that way. Yeah, look, it is, and it's um, it, it's it's sometimes from so-called industry experts as well. Yeah. A lot of these comments that they make are taken out of context, yeah. say from yeah, the media yeah. outlets that are reported. Yeah. But um, but 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 it it just strikes me as amazing that no one certainly can predict the 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 short term future. Um, two or three years ago, there was a there was some Australian professional fund managers that that um, uh, were selling out yeah. of their funds. Yeah. And basically retain the money to their investors because they thought, um, you know, we, 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 we've seen overvalued Australian companies at this point in time. Now, yeah. now there's been so much growth yeah. since then because of the, uh, a lot of the reasons, because of how profitable companies are now, because yeah. of the amount of money that's been injected into the economy during COVID. So, um, it could just goes to show that, that, that no one, no one can get this right. Mm. No one can consistently get this right. So, uh, look, our advice to everyone is 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 just ignore it. Yeah. Um, um, we see most of the financial, well, I see most of the financial uh, media as financial pornography. It's just, it's, it's, <laughs> it's 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 just it's it's absolute rubbish. Like yeah. what they yeah. what 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 is actually reported. Now to change gears a little bit, Michael. The um, the thing I was just thinking about here is we, we've sort of gone on a rant about uh, media and news and um, yeah, the, this sort of thing. The the big category of people we've missed, we've forgotten about here, are when we said beware of people telling you to get out. Is that we, we've talked all about the media and most of it, but the other big category of people is friends, family, mm-hmm. people that you know personally. And and this is you know we've touched on this. I told this story of uh, you know really good clients of mine that. Uh, last year during COVID, he had a friend that he was walking up the hill with every day, and and every day the friend was telling him, "Geez, you know, my super balance has dropped by this amount. I'm I can't cop it anymore. I'm moving all my money into cash. You should do the same." And the point here is not that this this mate of his wasn't trying to stitch him up. He, he wasn't trying to do the wrong thing. He wasn't trying to you know take him down with him. He, he genuinely thought that he was he was telling him to, the right mm. thing to do. And so, and that's the other part of it is you know. When, when you read, if you read a news headline, we've said this before, you, you've got to think about what's the incentive of this person. And, and, you know, a newspaper exists to sell you another newspaper tomorrow. And that's mm. essentially what the, the whole business model is. I think it can be uh, potentially even more dangerous is if you've got a friend or a family member that really cares about you and, and you know that they care about your well-being and your future. And, and then there's a period of, of negative volatility and prices drop. And they're telling you, "Hey, look, I really care about you. I want you to. I want you to be you know, um, financially set up. I think you should get out." I think that's probably a harder one as well because mm. it's 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 not that this person's an expert or anything like that, but they you know that they really care about you. You know they want what's best for you, and they're telling you to get out. So when we say beware of people getting out, it's not just the media. It's just it's not just economists or, or journalists or reporters or you know anything like that. It's all the people around you that are telling you to get out. It, even if they have your best interests at heart, they may just be giving you the wrong advice at the wrong time as well. Yeah, look, it's a it's a great point that you made there, Dallas, because because um, uh, it happens a lot. It does happen a lot, 
and and it's one of those things that um, if if even experts are wrong a lot of the time, if so-called experts are wrong and so-called professional yep. fund managers are wrong, then um, just just think what are the odds that this yep. family member of mine that has no yep. um, inherent skill or expertise yep. would be right yep. in this situation. So, yep. And that's, I think, a big, we've talked about this before, a big part of our role uh, working with our clients in, in those times is that it's n- it's not, and I think this is the dangerous thing, it's not that at those times we know better where the market's going. That's not at all what our role no. is to play there when we're saying to people, do not panic, do not sell and move your, move your super into cash. It's not because we think we know where the market's going. It's because we we have literally done a financial plan with these people. We have done a plan around mm. here's where you are now, here's where you need to be, here's what you need to be invested in throughout that whole way in order to achieve your goals. The plan consists of you getting money invested in a regular basis and staying invested throughout all these things. So that's, I think, where we, where, why I think people tend to listen to us at the time is it's not because we know where the market's going. We don't have any U-Bute charts that we can pull up where we say, you know, there's been this bounce and this is the, the technical analysis mm. of this. It's just because we go, we know what your goals are. We've sat down with you and worked out a plan to achieve those goals. We've been speaking to you about this about this every six months for the last five years. We've warned you that this volatility will happen. We know what you need to do. You know what you need to do based mm. on that. Let's just work the plan. And so, you know, in the example that, that I've told before about that client where that was all he needed to hear at that point in time when his mm. mate who was going up the hill with every day was saying, you should you should get out, I'm getting out, you should get out. All he needed to hear was, was a reminder of, yep, I am doing the right thing. Oh, yep, I know. We've talked about this. We've discussed it. This is This is what our plan is. Yeah, getting out or trying to time when to get out, and when to get back in is not part of our plan. We're not going to do that, and and that was that was what it took. Yeah, so two two important points that you raised there, Dallas. So have a plan and stick to that plan. So if you do that, yeah. things always work out. Yeah, um, things always work out for people. So thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Money Over Fifty podcast with Money Over Fifty Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.